History is full of people trying almost anything to gain political control of a country. Luckily, most of these people are just... just gonna have complete morons. So this is a list of the 10 worst attempts at world domination ever. The American media company CBS News once genuinely tried to invade Haiti. They noticed that the Haitian government was going through a brief period of instability, and their perfectly logical and reasonable reaction to this was to fund rebel fighters. They agreed to fund invading forces in return for exclusive rights to the footage of the fighting. The rebels would fight, and CBS would film it. Ultimately, their plan failed when the US government got wind of it. United States officials were shocked when they learned of the plan. But let's be honest, an American news corporation trying to control an entire country is nothing new. In 1981, nine white supremacists, mostly KKK members, were arrested while loading weapons into a boat. It was hard for them to explain the weapons to the FBI and it was even harder to explain the large Nazi flag that was also on the boat. It was soon revealed that the nine men were planning on sailing to the Caribbean and invading the tiny nation of Dominica. The nine men would then take power and live the rest of their life like kings. They were financially backed by South African officials, but the thing I don't understand is why a group of white supremacists would want to invade a country with a 70% black population. That's like if someone from Greenpeace punched a rabbit. Let me take you back to 1972. The current leader of Morocco is King Hassan. In August, the king's personal advisor decided that he wanted to be king. So he waited for the king to be flying home from Paris before sending fighter pilots in the air to kill him. The pilots began firing at the king's jet without realising that they didn't have any weapons. Their jets were still loaded with non-lethal practice ammunition. The King's reaction to this was to grab his radio and tell the pilots, Stop firing, the tyrant is dead. The pilots obeyed this and landed their jets on the ground. So just to make it clear what happened there, the King told the rebels that he himself was dead, and in the single biggest act of idiocy of all time, they believed him. They believed him when he said that he was dead. What a bunch of morons. On the west coast of Africa lies the small country of Ghana. In the mid-1980s, an entire army of eight people attempted to overthrow the Ghanaian government. They were hired by a mysterious man named Godfrey. Godfrey told them that the whole thing was part of a CIA operation and that they would be greeted by 80 armed soldiers when they arrived in Africa. Neither of which was true. Before they landed in Africa, they were arrested for illegal weapons smuggling. Now they did fail to gain power, but it's not about who wins or loses. It's taking part that counts. Mad Mike is an Irish mercenary leader. He is famous for his failed overthrow of the government of the tiny island nation of Sir Charles. In 1981, he created a mercenary rebel group and named it Ye Ancient Order of Froth Blowers. They hid their weapons inside their luggage when they arrived at the country's airport. But while they were at the airport, they accidentally queued up in the wrong line. They were standing in the something to declare line, which meant that their bags would have to be searched. If their bags were searched, Customs would find the weapons and they would be arrested. In order to avoid this, they started shooting people and hijacked a plane. Which usually works, but for them it didn't. It really wasn't long until they were arrested and convicted. In 1992, Hugo Chavez arrived in the capital of Venezuela with several army units. Their aim was to capture key buildings and inspire the masses to revolt against the government. The problem was that someone informed the authorities of the plan, so when the rebels arrived in the city, the military immediately started firing at them. They found themselves under so much fire that Hugo Chavez, the big man himself, had to flee his vehicle 
and run into a local museum. When he tried to leave the museum again, he found that the door was locked, so he was just trapped in a museum all night. King Charles I lost the English Civil War, meaning that he lost power. He was still king, but he was under house arrest, as no one really knew what to do with him. I mean, think about it. What do you do with a king? You can't make a mockery out of them, they do it themselves, with silly hats. So King Charles wanted to regain power. In order to achieve this, he started sending letters to politicians. The letters said that he was going to kill them and their entire family. The politicians didn't like being threatened, so they simply just executed him. During the French Revolution, King Louis and his wife were also captured and put under house arrest. Their master plan was to escape capture, flee to Austria, raise an army, and regain the French throne. They removed their royal garments and silly hats, and disguised themselves as regular rich people, which wasn't much of a disguise back in 18th century France. So obviously, obviously they didn't reach the Austrian border. They were recognised, and then executed via guillotine to the face. The Manhattan Rebellion was when members of the Royal Thai Navy wanted to gain control of their country, so they kidnapped the Prime Minister and imprisoned him on a warship. They assumed that the Thai government and Thai army would be desperate to get him back, so they would cripple to any demands. Turns out, the Thai army wasn't worried about the Prime Minister's safety at all. They simply started bombing the ship and didn't stop until it sank. Adolf Hitler wasn't always the leader of Germany, but he always had high hopes. In 1923, the German government was hosting an event in a beer hall, which sounds weird, but in Germany every building is basically a beer hall. Adolf Hitler and a group of 600 other Nazis burst into the room and declared a fascist revolution. The Nazis were soon forced to flee, as they didn't expect the police to shoot at them. They say Adolf Hitler was actually seen cowering behind other people as he ran for safety. Hitler did of course go on to become the Fuhrer, so if there are any impressionable young children watching, you could learn a lot from Uncle Adolf. And so that brings us to the end of the list. I would appreciate it if you helped me out by maybe liking, commenting or even sharing this video.